All right, Middle Age White Guy Reacts is back again. This time we are doing Nova Rockefeller. Did your best. We I just did heart emojis. I've caught up to Tom. Okay. So let's explore somebody else. Let's go back to Nova. Um, moving forward, we're gonna do some Nova, some Brandon, maybe sprinkle in some other people. So but for now, this one I heard is very good, very deep song. So let's get into it. At school, he couldn't do the work. The kids all called him retarded. He got a job in a warehouse where he'd pack and cut carpet. And he never moved up. And he never fell in love. He's 50, but really 12. Thinking about giving up. She married young. Mm, okay. So I don't know who she's talking about there. If it's the boy, but I don't think it's the boy because she said, um, you know, he worked in a factory cutting carpet. He's, you know, 50, but really 12. At school, they called him retarded because he couldn't do the work. So this is a person who mentally wasn't the sharpest. All he could do was get into a factory, do manual labor. He was at, never able to move up because either his mentality is that of a 12-year-old or his intelligence is that of a 12 year old, you know, so I mean, that's oof. He got a job in a warehouse where he packed and cut carpet, and he never moved up, and he never fell in love. He's 50, but really 12, thinking about giving up. She married young and always felt like she had gotten too deep. Started feeling like her only way out was to cheat. Her friends all villainized it, didn't see she was weak. It's been 20 years, and it still breaks her heart that they don't speak. He was a rock star. You know, and once, oh God, man, like once something like that happens, once a spouse or a partner cheats, the level of trust is never the same. Never the same. I've been in that situation before, all right, way back in the day, and it it's impossible to navigate. Like like I said, the trust is never the same. It's it's mentally it's torture. Like I told my wife when I met her that that's the deal breaker. Like, you could do anything you want to me and I could probably forgive you, but that one, there's no way. There's just no way. Like I said, mentally, it's it's just torture. It's torture because anytime you're away from them, you're wondering where they're at, who they're with, what they're doing, who they're doing. You know, I mean, it's awful. And I promised myself I would never, ever put myself through that again. And I haven't, you know, and... If, if that's what you want to do, you, you want to go out and, and do your thing, sow your oats, fine. But you're, you're not doing it with me, and you're not coming back to me when you're done. So, you know, that's, it's, it's awful. Like, I, I can't, you can't, you can't. It's not a healthy relationship at that point. I mean, maybe if you can let it all go, just let it all go and completely 100% forgive, but I don't even know if anyone is actually strong enough to really fully do that i know i'm not for sure i'm not she was weak it's been 20 years and it still breaks her heart that they don't speak he was a rock star in small bars until the gigs weren't paying bills he had his daughter in the car and he knew he had to make the choice to put down his guitar and every day he wonders if he could have been a star i know you yeah, and that's rough as a father you know it's like I, now i'm not a musician i'm not like super talented at anything that like would have made me famous but I know, like, you just sometimes you got to do what you got to do to provide for the family, even if it's something that you don't want to do. Like, I worked an awful shift for two years where I was seeing my kids for half an hour in the morning. And then by the time I got home, I was laying them down to bed. It killed me. It, it absolutely killed me. And it killed my wife. I mean, because she was she was a, a, a full time teacher at the time. So she spent her day with 20 third graders and then came home to four rambunctious boys all night. Had to cook the dinners, had to, you know, get them all ready for bed, do the, you know, the teeth brushing and all that. And it was just, it was crushing our family. But that was the only way at that time that I could keep a roof over our head and the lights on and food in the house. So I did what I had to do. And as soon as I was able to get out of that situation, though, I jumped at that chance right away, right away. So, you know, it, it sucks. And I, I would hate to, I would never feel like, you know, 
my kids stopped me from doing anything. Like you can't look at it like that. You have to do what you have to do for them. Can't define yourself by your failures. We all fail. We all fail at everything. Well, not at everything. <laughs> we all fail in our lives. You know, and honestly, if you think about it, you probably fail more times than you succeed. So if you define yourself by your failures, you're never going to see yourself as a worthy person. You got to look at your successes. Like, is this her... F I'm, I'm assuming, like, she's speaking of members of her family. And I'm assuming... I don't know who the first one was, but I'm assuming the next two were her mom and dad. Because it just, I mean, going from the visuals, um, the age ranges and everything, I'm assuming that's her mom and dad she was talking about. So, I mean, this is the... Oof. Diagnosed with Parkinson's, it's something she lives with. Was strong and independent, now relies on the children. Her voice mm. shakes when she speaks, she's embarrassed, she hates to talk. And every day she wakes up wondering if new parts of her are lost. He got a Damn, man, that's rough. That was, uh, that was my grandfather at the end of his life. It wasn't Parkinson's, it was stage three lung cancer. Um, he was a strong, independent, he was the, the alpha of the family. You know, and, uh, he was helpless at the end, and it killed him. That was the worst part of it to him, was that he had to rely on other people for things, you know. A guy who provided for his family all of his life was the patriarch of the family, you know. Hates to talk and every day she wakes up wondering if new parts of her are lost. He got her pregnant before he could finish school. He got busy acting dumb because he didn't know what to do. He ignored he had a girl till her mother stopped calling too. Mm. On his deathbed he wished for the daughter he never knew. She loved her. So, I mean, she went... Like, I still don't know who the first one was. Definitely mother and father next. Just did grandma. So is this the grandfather she's talking about? Like he, him and the grandma got pregnant young. He didn't know what to do. So he bailed. He bailed and went off and lived his life. I mean, that's kind of the vibe I'm getting from that. And then at the end, he regretted not knowing his real family or part of his family. You know, his, his offspring, his, his daughter. I'm calling too on his deathbed. He wished for the daughter he never knew. Mm. She loved her family, two girls and two boys. Husband in the garage. She yells, she's sick of the noise. And the one day he's out riding and he dies in a crash. Now she do anything to have the buzz of his shock. I know you. I'm not sure who she's talking about in this. I'm assuming these are family members, but like that one sucks. Could you, I mean, we all have the things about our spouse that we, that just annoy the hell out of us. And we're tired of hearing it all the time. But we wouldn't realize how much we missed that until it's not there anymore. Like, that's rough, man. Shit. They're at a, is this a funeral now? Ah, oh, the grandma. So here's the grandpa who I'm assuming he's the one who bailed early and never really, you know, he abandoned them. And now that they've passed, they're both outside looking into the window at the rest of their family. Like, oh. Yep. 
I just hope when my kids are adults, they think that. Like, I know you did your best, man. Fill me in on exactly what the family members... I'm assuming these are all family members of her. This feels like a very deep, personal song. Fill me in on who exactly the family members were, if you know. I mean... Like I said, I just hope in another... Well, I have a newborn, so in another 18 years, my kids look at me and my wife and say... What she's saying. All right, that'll be the reaction... Middle-aged white guy <laughs> reacts is out. Peace.